ओके वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट फाइलम आर्थ्रोपोडा ओके दिस इज द लार्जेस्ट फाइलम ऑफ द एनिमल किंगडम एंड 70% ऑफ द प्लांट ओके एनिमल स्पीशीज अप टू नाउ डिस्कवर्ड आर विद रेफरेंस टू दिस आर्थ्रोपोडा ओनली एंड व्हेन यू कम कंपेयर द टोटल स्पीशीज टू थर्ड ऑफ द स्पीशीज up to now we discover we discovered or the representatives of this arthropoda okay and next when you observe this arthropoda the name arthropoda is given because of the presence of jointed appendages okay we'll observe different appendages like antenna maxilla okay and next legs okay like this we will observe different parts of the body and which are formed by the small small structures which are joined okay small small segments which are joined that's why we are calling it as jointed appendages so the name given as arthropoda and in these organisms the body is divided into head thorax and abdomen head thorax and abdomen okay and next when you observe these organisms in these organisms respiratory organ or gills gills book lungs or tracheal system or tracheal system and next in these organisms the body is covered by a cutaneous exoskeleton okay the body is covered by a chitinous exoskeleton and next these are uh, organisms with the organ system level of organization triploblastic bilaterally symmetrical and coelomate animals body covered by chitinous exoskeleton okay the body is divided into head thorax and abdomen and uh, they possess uh, jointed appendages so the name given as uh, arthropoda and next the respiratory organs are gills in some organisms in aquatic forms we will find a gills okay and next and in some organisms we will find a book gills book lungs and in most of the organisms we will find tracheal system okay which is consisting of tube like structures which will okay which will extend throughout the body and transport respiratory gases and next the circulatory system is of open type that means in these organisms we don't find blood vessels we don't find the blood vessels usually and the blood will flow in a cavity is called as a sinuses okay open cavity is called sinuses that's why we are calling it as a open circulatory system and next okay we will find some sensor sensory organs sensory organs like antenna okay antenna which are chemotactic which will helps in locating the food material okay and next eyes okay in some will find a compound and in find in some will find a simple eyes compound eyes means each eye is again divided into small small units 
which will act as a each structure can act as a eye that means each structure will form the image completely and this structure which is unit of the eye we are calling it as omatidium okay note this one ma omatidium o m m a t i d i u m omatidium okay the the smaller units in the compound i we call it as omatidium for example when you observe the cockroach cockroach the each compound i of the cockroach consists of up to 1000 omatidia up to 1000 omatidia okay that means each omatidia will perceive the light separately and they form the image separately okay and uh, in these organisms the vision is like vision that means uh, one image will be overlapping with the another image and uh, the object will be show okay will be observed in the form of blurred overlapping okay clearly the image will not be observed okay like us okay we can see the any object very clearly but uh, in case of this organ okay in the insects which possess compound i usually they form mosaic vision that means uh, one image overlapping with the another image like a blurred like vision is observed okay and in some organisms it is simple and in some organisms it is simple that means we will find only one structure and ever only will form the image simple image okay that is eyes antenna eyes and next stratocyst stratocyst are the balancing structures in aquatic forms okay a large number of aquatic arthropods are there like uh, prawns crabs okay like this okay when you observe these aquatic forms in these aquatic forms to balance their body in the water some specialized structures called stratocyst are balancing organs are present okay they will balance okay that means they detect the pressure of the water at each depth they are living they detect the pressure of the water and according to that it balances its body so that it will float in the water otherwise it will sink into the water okay such a balancing that's a statocyst so these are the some of the sensory organs that are associated with the arthropod that is antenna which are chemotactic okay in nature that means they detect the chemical nature so that they can identify the food material the kind okay the type of the food material and next eyes to perceive light some organisms are nocturnal some organisms are diurnal and some are will can move in both for example if you observe the mosquitoes usually most of the mosquitoes are nocturnal that means they come out of okay, they, they will come in such a food during night time cockroaches night time okay okay some of the insects we can observe in our okay some moths okay coming at night okay that is so for to perceive the light this eyes are useful and stratocyst are balancing organ are present usually in aquatic forms for balancing and next coming to the excretory excretion takes place through malpighian tubules a specialized structures okay which are uh, long tubular structures long tubular finger like structures okay which will arise uh, like a tuft okay 
which will collect the nitrogenous waste from the body and they are excreted outside. These are long finger-like uh, structures which are arranged in tough. Okay, tough, uh, that means in a group. We are calling malfusion tubules. Okay. That is, okay, the malfusion tubules are the excretory organs in most of the forms. And next, uh, coming to the reproduction, they are mostly dioecious. That means they are unisexual. Okay, and they show sexual dimorphism. That means uh, we can able to distinguish the male insect or male organism from the female organism. Okay, and fertilization is usually internal. Okay, as the organisms are mostly terrestrial. Okay, even if they are aquatic, also we usually will find the fertilization is internal. Okay, and next they are mostly oviparous. That means they lay eggs. They are mostly oviparous. That is, they lay eggs. And the development may be direct or indirect. That means we'll find certain larval forms. Okay, larval forms. For example, you can, okay, we might have studied the, okay, the life cycle of a mosquito. We'll find egg, larva, pupa, and adult. So we'll find two stages. That is larva and pupa. Okay, in some we'll find nymphs. In some we'll find maggots. Okay, like that. Okay, the larval form, different types of larval forms in between the egg and the Okay, in that case, we call it as indirect. And some organisms will give birth to anguans, which is similar to the adults. Okay, in that case, we call it as a direct. Very few are direct, most of them are indirect. And next, uh, examples. Okay, a large number of uh, insects which belongs to this group arthropoda are economically important. Okay, for example, Epis, which is the, okay, Epis, uh, the scientific name of honeybee. Epis Dorsata, Epis indica. These are the different species of uh, honeybees. Okay, for honeybee, we all know very well the honey is okay is obtained from these honeybees. And next, Bombyx mori. Okay, it is the scientific name of silkworm. Okay, silkworm means a caterpillar. Okay, silk moth, that is the adult. Okay, generally the term silkworm means the caterpillar of a silk moth. Silk moth, okay, generally we call it as silk moth because it is a moth. Okay, but uh, from both these stages, uh, the silk is not obtained. The silk is obtained from the pupal stage. Pupal stage of this uh, silk moth. Okay. That is bomb. Okay, the scientific name of the silk moth is uh, Bombyx mori. And next, okay, Laxifer. Lacca. Laxifer lacca. That is the scientific name of a lac insect. 
from which we will obtain a substance called lac. Okay, this lac is used in a sealing. Okay, used in a sealing. Okay. And next, some of the insects are involved in a transport of diseases. Okay, they will not directly cause the disease, but they will carry some of the disease causing organisms from one place to another place or from one organism to another organism. Okay, such organisms we are calling it as vectors. Okay, most of the mosquitoes and of us, which is involved in the causing malaria, which will transport the malarial parasite from one human to another human. Culex, which is involved in the transport of a filariasis culex mosquito, which is involved in the transmission of a Filariasis or elephantiasis from one person to another person. And next, it is okay, it is involved in the transmission of a large number of viral diseases like encephalitis, yellow fever. Okay. Okay, that's, and next, okay, so these mosquitoes, these are commonly called as mosquitoes, Anopheles, Culex, and Edix, Edix mosquitoes, okay, which are involved in a transmission of uh, diseases. That's why we are calling them as vectors because they are not directly causing, but they are helping the disease causing organisms getting transmitted from one person to another person or from intermediate host to from one host to another host. Okay, that is. And next, gregarious pest. Okay, gregarious pest. That means uh, these are the pests which will damage to the crops. Okay, pest, we can say pest means, uh, okay, the musk, okay, the insects uh, which will cause damage to the crops. Okay, locust commonly called locust, okay? And next, the living fossil. What is meant by fossil? Anybody knows? Okay, anybody know what is meant by fossil? Say yes or no. Sir, dead remains of fishes or animals under uh, high pressure inside earth, sir. Yes, okay, when you observe here, okay, the fossil is nothing but, okay, the dead remains of any organism, any part of the organism, the dead remains of any part of the organism which is buried inside the soil. Okay, These, okay, such structures we call it as fossil. Then what is mean by living fossil? Okay, generally we are saying fossil means it is the dead remain which is buried inside the soil. Then here we have the, okay, saying living fossil. Okay, generally when you observe the fossil, as it is buried inside the soil for so many years, it does not undergo any change. It doesn't get... Under, okay, it does not undergo any change. It remained as it is. That uh, structures. Okay, in the same manner, here there are some organisms. 
okay there are some organisms that are present in the world which are still living but they doesn't undergone any change from thousands of years generally what we are seeing according to the evolution every organism will undergo certain changes according to the changes that are taking place in the environment and we are saying that those organisms which do not change they usually undergo they are usually removed from the earth surface because they are not suited for that environment so slowly the number will really gradually reduces but this is an exception which has not undergone any change since some thousands of years and remained as it is from that thousands of years back onwards but still it is living and not undergone any changes in course of evolution since many years that's why such a organisms we call them as a living fossil one such example is a limulus that is a king crab okay limulus which is commonly called as a king crab this is considered as a living fossil understood anybody is having any doubt regarding this living fossil okay here we can see some of the examples some of the pictures that were given of arthropoda that is a locust okay locust and next one you can see the butterfly okay and next scorpion and next prawn okay when you observe this locust and a butterfly they belongs to a group called insecta whereas okay the scorpion belongs to arachnida okay whereas the prawns belongs to crustacea and okay these are all different classes of arthropoda but we don't have okay the okay uh, okay this classification up to classes we have classification okay the animal kingdom only up to phylum up for invertebrates okay okay but these okay just remember okay prawns belongs to a class called crustacea and and uh, scorpion belongs to the class arachnida and uh, locust butterflies okay mosquitoes honey bees bombyx laxifer black insect silk moth okay and next to this honey bees mosquitoes ants all they belongs to this uh, class insecta that's why we commonly call them as insects because as they belongs to the class insecta even the mosquitoes also mosquitoes house flies cockroaches these are all belongs to insects that is class insecta okay okay sometimes in the neat they are asking related to this class okay so you can remember organism and class that's it and next the next phylum that is a phylum mollusca phylum mollusca m o l l u s c a mollusca okay when you observe here this is the second largest animal phylum okay the next to arthropoda okay which is the largest phylum in the not only in the animal kingdom in the in the living organisms which phylum is the largest phylum means we can say arthropoda and the next to this phylum which is the largest one means it is mollusca okay 
Uh, next, uh, molluscans are a terrestrial or aquatic. Okay, in molluscans, we'll find both uh, aquatic forms as well as the terrestrial forms. And in aquatic forms, again, we'll find marine or freshwater forms. We'll find both freshwater forms as well as uh, marine water forms. Having an organ system level of organization. And these organisms are also having a, okay, organ system level of organization. And next, when you observe these organisms, they are exception a few adult forms. Exceptions to a few adult forms like snails. Okay, like snails. Uh, snails, the adult forms will show asymmetry but uh, the larval forms will show bilateral symmetry already while we are discussing about symmetry we okay we discussed this one the adult forms show a symmetry but uh, the larval forms will show bilateral symmetry that's why we are okay we are fixing to this uh, bilateral symmetry only these organisms that's why they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic and coelomate animals Okay, triploblastic. That means they possess the three germinal layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. And they are coelomate animals. That means they are true coelomate animals with the schizocelom. That is, uh, the coelom is uh, formed by the splitting of uh, mesodermal cells. And next. Uh, Body is covered by a calcareous shell and is unsegmented with a distinct head, muscular foot, and a visceral hump. Okay. And next, okay, in the okay, most of the organisms, very few are exceptions which do not have this uh, shell. Okay. And most of the organisms that are included under mollusca are having a uh, an external shell that means the body is covered by a hard calcareous calcareous means which is made up of calcium carbonate carious shell okay body is covered by a calcareous shell and is unsegmented with a distinct head muscular foot and visceral arm Okay, with a distinct head, muscular foot, and visceral hump. That means the body, okay, the body is very soft. The body is soft. Why? Because uh, the organisms are covered by a shell, completely enclosed by a shell to protect from uh, enemies. Okay, so because of this, Phenomena, the body of the organisms is very much soft. Okay, and it is unsegmented. That we don't find any segments externally observed. Okay, but the body is divided into head, muscular foot, and visceral hump. That means uh, all the body parts are concentrated at one place. And that region we are calling it as a visceral hump. So that is okay. So it is divided into three parts. So a soft and spongy layer of skin forms a mantle over the visceral hump. Okay, when you observe the visceral hump, the visceral hump is covered by a soft and spongy layer of skin. Okay, and this we are calling it as a mantle. Okay, mantle, mantle, okay, over the hump, visceral hump. The space between the hump and the mantle is called a mantle cavity in which feather like gills are present. Between the visceral hump and the mantle, small space will be there. And this space we are calling it as a mantle cavity. The space between the 
visceral hump and the mantle we are calling it as a mantle cavity and this mantle cavity consists of a feather like a gills feather like a, a gills like a feather okay the gills are present and these are uh, involved in a uh, respiration and uh, excretory function okay they have respiratory and excretory functions that means they help in exchange of gases and at the same time they are also involved in a uh, removal of uh, waste materials from the body and next the anterior head region has sensory tentacles okay the anterior head region usually the anterior head region you can observe, okay you might have observed in the snail small thread like structures are observed at the head region like antennas okay those are uh, tentacles they are sensory in nature and next okay this is very very unique characteristic feature of a mollusca the mouth contains a file like or feeding called radula so the presence of radula is the unique feature of molluscans radula it is a rasping organ rasping means okay it will take the food material and the food material is rubbed over this structure so that the food material is broken down into small small pieces for a digestion process okay that uh, rasping organ which is present uh, in the mouth which helps in feeding we are calling it as a radula rasping means uh, rubbing like it will move move and forward and uh, breaks the food material into small small pieces and next coming to the reproduction they are usually dioecious okay they are usually dioecious that means they are unisexual oviparous that is they lay eggs with indirect development that means uh, we'll find the larval stages okay we'll find different uh, okay different forms of larva okay in this phylum okay different organisms will form different types of larvae okay and finally this lar okay the egg uh, gives rise to larva and they will be converted into different forms finally develops into the adult so the development is usually indirect okay Next, examples of this phylum mollusca that is a phyla which is commonly called as apple snail the normal snail that we'll observe now okay with the round shaped shell that is the apple snail phyla and next pink tada that is a pearl oyster will obtain pearls now from the okay those organisms we call it as oysters as they okay as they are used for obtaining the pearls we are calling it as a pearl oysters okay it's a scientific name is a pink tada and next one is a sepia that is cuttle fish okay loligo commonly called as squid and next octopus which is commonly called as devil fish you know very well about this octopus okay a large number of people might have observed this octopus okay it also belongs to this uh, phylum mollusca only octopus and next aplysia that is a sea hare and a dentalium shell that means uh, okay this dentalium will looks like a the 
tusk of the elephant the tusk how the tusk of the element elephant is observed okay in that shape it is like elongated tusk like that's why it is called a tusk shell scientific name is a dentalium and next one is a ketopleura that is chiton okay the shell is divided into eight plates that's why named as a chiton okay okay pleura means the plate like keto means eight okay keto pleura as the body is covered by eight plate like structures which will form the shell that's why named as keto so these are the some of the examples phyla pinctada sepia laligo topus aplasia okay aplasia dentalium and a keto pleura okay that is uh, related to this uh, mollusca anybody is having any doubt regarding mollusca Oh, okay so when you observe here starting from ellida arthropoda and mollusca all these organisms are true coelomates and they possess the shadow coelom they are true coelomate even though the true coelom and the type of the coelom is described as shadow coelom the splitting of uh, mesodermal cells will helps in the formation of uh, the coelom okay but when you observe this uh, echinoderms Are echinoderm the phylum echinodermata. These are the organisms which will show enterocelom. Okay, that is the true coelom only, but the coelom is formed from the archenteron, which we call it as a future digestive system. okay it later it forms the digestive system and from that archenteron the mesodermal cells are formed and these mesodermal cells will form the coelom okay we are calling it as a enterocelom okay but a true coelom only eucelomates eucelomates there are two types cygocelom and enterocelom okay whatever we have discussed up to now that is ellida arthropoda and mollusca the true coeloms they are showing cygocelom and this is the organisms which are included under invertebrates which will show enterocelom okay that's what the, that is the differentiation we can observe with the coelom in these organisms okay and next one coming to the characters the general characteristics of this uh, organisms that were included under the phylum echinodermata these animals have an endoskeleton of calcareous ossicles up to now whatever the animals we have discussed if the skeleton is present it is present outer side that's why we call it as exoskeleton for example if you take if you take arthropoda in arthropoda we observe chitinous exoskeleton and in case of snails okay or in case of molluscans we can observe calcareous exoskeleton which is made up of shell only a few exceptions that is sepia laligo okay these consists of the shell inside that is the endoskeleton the shell is internal the sepia and the laligo is an exception which is showing the shell is internal endoskeleton okay but in echinoderms we don't find exoskeleton the skeleton is internal that is we'll find endoskeleton 
made up of calcareous ossicles that is a bone like structures cal which is made up of calcium carbonate calcareous ossicles and hence the name echinodermata okay there is a spiny bodied okay spiny bodied okay these are, okay calcareous ossicles which are present inside will be protruding from internally so forming a spiny structures on the organism appears like spiny because of these ossicles are protruding out it appears like the organism possessing spines because of this spiny structures it is named as echino the term echino represents to spiny derma means skin eta means bearing the okay, spiny skin bearing organisms that's why named as echinodermata but uh, these uh, spiny structures are not present only on the surface they are coming from the internal structure that is uh, the endoskeleton okay endoskeletal structures that is uh, okay calcareous ossicles that's why it was named as echinodermata and next the organisms that were included under the pardon echinodermata are all aquatic and uh, exclusively marine remember this one very clearly exclusively marine even we don't find one freshwater echinoderm even we don't find one terrestrial echinoderm whatever the echinoderm we have discovered up to now all they belongs to marine water that's why we say exclusively marine all are marine all are marine exclusively marine with the organ system level of organization all are marine with the organ system level of organization and next okay while we are discussing about symmetry we have already discussed regarding this the adult echinoderms are radially symmetrical but the larvae are bilaterally symmetrical okay okay most of the echinoderms are sessile are stationary they do not move so because of this they have developed this radial because of this they developed this radial symmetry due to the environmental conditions but the free living or freely swimming larval forms are showing a bilateral symmetry okay are showing a bilateral symmetry so that's why the adult echinoderms are radial symmetrical but larval forms are bilaterally symmetrical and next they are triploblastic and coelomate animals okay they are triploblastic that means they possess three germinal layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm and uh, will find the coelom that is the true coelom that is u coelom it is uh, intro coelomate type because the coelom is formed from archenteron that's why we say intro coelom okay and next the digestive system is complete with the mouth on the lower side and anus on the upper side okay there is a ventral side okay the mouth is present on the ventral side whereas the anus is present on the dorsal side okay and next the very very important characteristic feature which is unique to this echinoderms 
that is the water vascular system the most distinctive feature of echinoderms is the presence of vascular system which helps in locomotion capture and the transport of food that means capture of food and the transport of food and the respiration okay and the respiration so a large number of functions or various functions are carried out by this water vascular system that is the locomotion capture and transport of food and respiration and an excretory system is absent because these are the organisms which will show excretion by diffusion through this water vascular system only okay that means uh, okay this water as the water is moving through this water vascular system that nitrogenous waste substances will enter into this water by diffusion process and they are removed outside so that's why they didn't develop okay this excretory organs that's why the excretory system is absent okay and next coming to the reproduction sexes are separate that means they are unisexual dioecious okay reproduction is sexual reproduction is sexual fertilization is usually external fertilization is external that means uh, it will take place in the water and next the development is direct with the free living free swimming larva already i told you okay in most of the echinoderms the arms are stationary they are unable to move are sessile they are fixed that's why the symmetry has also has been changed to radial symmetry but uh, the larval forms are free swimming and they show bilateral symmetry so in these organisms will find a free swimming uh, bilaterally symmetrical larva so as the larval form is observed in we say the development is indirect so examples that is astrias that is what we commonly called as starfish the starfish okay it is not a fish it belongs to echinoderms okay so that is sea urchin antidon that is sea lily okay cucumeria it is commonly called as sui cucumber okay and ophiura that is commonly called as a brittle star okay you can see the diagrams of uh, astrias and ophiura astrias which is commonly called as starfish and uh, ophiura which is commonly called as a brittle star okay okay usually this echinoderms uh, consists of uh, five arms five or multiples of five arms okay okay and next in these organisms will find there is a high power of regeneration In, in these organisms, we'll find a great power of regeneration. Okay, there is. A, okay, that means regeneration means whatever the parts that were lost, they can be reformed. For example, if an organism 
if a predator came and uh, eaten the starfish okay there are five arms are there okay during its capture it has lost four arms four arms were eaten with arms. only one arm is left that a single arm is able to regenerate the remaining four arms that much high degree of regeneration is observed in case of this echinoderms okay that means when you observe the echinoderms we can observe that the echinoderms are showing a little bit uh, degenerated mechanism that is uh, okay there is no special digestive system no special respiratory system no special excretory organs and they do not show locomotion and the adult forms are showing radial symmetry showing external fertilization okay showing swimming larval forms okay these are similar characteristics we can observe with reference to okay proliferants and uh, cylindrates so that means uh, some of the characters back to ancestral characters that are observed in echinoderms okay that means uh, we can see okay a little bit by observing these characters we can say that but there are along with that there are some advanced characters are also there presence of endoskeleton presence of enterocoelom triploblastic nature okay unisexual nature okay this of the advanced characters we can observe in these organisms okay and okay and along, along with that we'll also observe some degenerate characters like a presence of water vascular system which is performing all the functions loss of different organ systems presence of regeneration power okay that is okay okay and the next phylum is a phylum hemichordata okay when you observe this hemichordata hemichordata was earlier considered as a subphylum under the phylum chordata okay before uh, this hemichordata was placed under the phylum chordata as a sub okay that means the chordate okay the phylum chordata is divided into different subphylums like a hemichordata vertebrata urochordata like that some different subphyla are there but here because of the characters some distinct characters that are exhibited by the hemichordata okay the biologist have been or the zoologist have separated this uh, hemichordata from the phylum chordata and they have given us uh, they are placed under the separate phylum hemichordata okay but now it is placed as a separate phylum under non chordata because they do not have a notochord okay the very character very important characteristic feature in the chordates okay that's why after they 